Good morning, guys. All my brothers and sisters of Bethel Community Church, but and all my brothers and sisters throughout the world. So it's lovely to speak to you again. It's good to have uh, some time together and to worship God. So today's recording will be based on John, 1 John chapter 5. So welcome again, and I hope you enjoy it today. God be with you and bless you. In Jesus, my Saviour forever, He forsook me and bought me by His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is to me. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Good morning again. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we can have victory in Jesus over all circumstances, even over COVID-19. If we stand strong in you and we apply our lives to study your word, to pray and to concentrate on you, Lord, that you would cover us with the precious blood of Jesus of protection. The Lord, we would all keep safe. Lord, I pray for the families of those who tune in today that you be with them and you bless them during this lockdown and how difficult times are. But Lord, you are with us, even unto the end of the age. You said you'd never leave us. Amen. Well, today's reading is from 1 John chapter 5, starting at verse uh, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is born of God, and every one that loveth him, that begat loveth him also, that is begotten of him. See, we love God today. We love Jesus because of the wonderful sacrifice that he made for us upon the cross. And we love him is the first begotten of God, which was Jesus, you know, God's son. Wonderful, isn't it? Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. You know, it's good to emphasize certain scriptures. Jesus is the Christ and is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also, that he is begotten of him. So when we love Jesus, we love God too. Verse 2, By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. See, it's very important that we love God. We keep his commandments as his dear children. When we do that, God's protection and blessing is upon us. If we disobey his commandments, then the curses will come upon us. The curses in the book for unbelief and for doubt and not trusting in Jesus Christ. So let's keep his commandments today. Obey him. Two commandments I give to you, Jesus said. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbour as yourself. So we must obey God's commandments. Verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. They're not too difficult to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with soul and strength. It's an act of the will. You must be determined in your mind to do this. And why not? Because of so much he's done for us, we should all be in love with him, because he has done so much great great things for us, of where we are glad. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. So if you're born of God, you can overcome the world today. We overcome the world, the flesh and the devil, because we stand in the name of Jesus Christ that has all power. His blood has more power than anything else to wash away our sins and to cover us and protect us from the works of the enemy. And we overcome the world by standing up and saying, no, we will not go along with the crowd. We will do what Jesus asks us to do. We will obey him and trust him only. And then when we do that, God will bless us. And this is the victory. We 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 played this song, Victory in Jesus, my Saviour forever. He bought me and bought me by his precious blood. You know, we've got to be grateful. We should be grateful for this. It should infuse us with power from on high. 
we should be rejoicing in Jesus Christ today, even though things are difficult and tough. We have so much to be grateful for. And we have the victory. We only have the victory by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And we can use that and apply the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus to our lives, to our homes and to our community. So that we will all be protected. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Are you a believer in Jesus Christ today? If you are, you can overcome the world. You can stand up and be the person God has called you to be. And you know, so you know, we must overcome the world by this by our faith, by our testimony, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us stand fast in these difficult times. We will not go along with the crowd. We will not fear. For the, even though the earth be removed, or the mountains be carried into the sea, we must stand fast in the faith of God. He that overcometh the world is he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Then you can overcome all circumstances because of his power, his blood in us. This is he, verse 6, that came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ. See, George, Jesus was born in the same way as we were born. You know, his mother Mary had to go through, um, through travail, uh, through, uh, what's the word for it now? Um, through the, the hardness and uh, labour pains, and that's what I was looking for. And he was born like we are born, but yet he was born from above, because he only had... God was his father. Jesus was his, uh, um, Jesus was born of Mary, but God was the ultimate person involved in that. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. Um, when you pass Jesus into your life, the Holy Spirit comes into your life. And he will direct you into all truth. When you read and study the Bible as we do in today, he will help you to understand what you're reading and help you to carry it out. It's no good reading this, it's putting it into practice in everyday life. And that's why we need to meditate on the Word of God every day so that we might grow and become more like Jesus. The Spirit bears witness. So when you read something from the Scripture, you should have, I do when I'm reading this today, I have something like a feeling and like a, a power within me and says, yes, that's what God's word is. That's what I need to be doing. That's where I am. Amen. And the Spirit bears witness because the Spirit is truth. Because the Holy Spirit, once you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit is in you. And this is one that many, many people struggle over, this next verse. And Jehovah's Witnesses and other people find this one difficult to believe. They've even cut it out of their own Bible. It's not even in there. So, you know, they're cutting out what's, you know, very important part of the truth of Jesus Christ in the Gospel. Verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father and the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Who's the Word? The Word is Jesus Christ. The Father is God, and the Holy Ghost is the Holy Ghost who comes and convicts all men of sin. And the important part in there, these three are one. We can't understand it. I mean, we have descriptions of it. There's like three in one oil. It does three purposes. It cools, it cleans, and lubricates the Holy Spirit. And it's just one oil. It has three purposes. That's the only example I can give you. I don't fully understand this. One day we will. But God is three persons. The Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. The next head in here is Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Perfect redemption, purchase of blood. I and my say, I can't remember all of it, but it's an old hymn 
which is, has so much truth in it. And when I see words like this, it reminds me of old hymns I learnt as a child. Sometimes I think we need to go back and look at these and consider the truths in them. Verse 9. If we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater than the witness of man. Yes. For this is the witness of God which he has testified of his Son. God said, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased, when Jesus was baptised by John the Baptist. So we have three, two things now. We've said the Holy Spirit is the witness. God is the witness to Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's a good part to, to ponder. That's a good study on its, on its own. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. So if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, you are a witness. There are three witnesses mentioned here. The Holy Spirit, God, Jesus. There's four actually. Jesus and our own witness from our own personal experience that we know him. Wonderful words of God. He that believeth on the Son of God, verse 10, hath a witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Because you see creation, you see God in everything. And then you deny that God doesn't exist. Then you're making God out to be a liar. There are witnesses. There are three or four witnesses we've discussed already. The Spirit, the water and the blood. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we, we are also witnesses of these things. Because he believeth not the record that God gave his Son. We make God out to be a liar if you disbelieve what God has said about his word. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this is in his Son. His record, his witness is in the Son of Jesus Christ. There's other one. There's the word, the Bible is a witness. It is power. It is a witness that God's word is true. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Yeah, we live in a kind of a life at the moment, but we can have fullness in life when we have Jesus Christ within us. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't know God, you don't know the Holy Spirit, you're living in sin and death and in blindness, as we discussed in another uh, teaching that I did. So we, we must have Jesus Christ in us. We have an opportunity today to come to him to repent of our sins and have new life in Jesus Christ, to become alive unto God. In our Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve fell away from God. That relationship they had with him, which they walked with him and talked with him every day, was lost. So in a sense, that became spiritual death. But through Jesus Christ, we can have spiritual life. We can walk with Jesus Christ. We can talk to him and have a relationship with the Father through what Jesus did for us on the cross. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son, uh, that Son of God hath not life. These things I have written unto you, that believe in the name of the Son of God, though he may know that he have eternal life, and that he believe on the name of the Son of God. See, once you have that in you, What's written in the Bible comes alive to you when you have the Son of God in him. And when you speak to God, he makes us alive. It's vibrant. It's passionate. I feel like today, talking to you people today, that I've got rivers of living water flowing out of my belly. Because that's the living water of God and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. I was walking around the garden feeling a bit of a heaviness this morning. But as soon as I opened up the Bible and sat down here, I feel a lifting in my spirit. So you can experience that today. Because we're all having to adapt to a new way of living. And sometimes it's hard. We want to be out. We want to be doing things. We want to meet people. We want to do things. But we can't do what we want to do. But we can get into God's word. We can be fired up by the Holy Spirit. So if you are feeling weak and tired today, turn down your eyes on Jesus. He will fill you. And the Holy Spirit will quicken your spirit as we read before. He will make you alive unto Christ Jesus and you will know his truth in you. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. 
we are believers in Jesus Christ, if we have given our hearts over to him, that you might know that you have eternal life. Whatever we might suffer here, if we die, then we know where we go when we have a, an eternal life promised to us with God in heaven. Wonderful. That you have eternal life and that you may believe on the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Have you got a confidence in him today? Well, you can have this confidence if you believe on Jesus Christ and you allow him into your life and you allow his word to water you, to refresh you, to feed you, to build you up, that you might know him. And this is a confidence. I have a confidence in him today. I have a confidence that he's there praying for me even in my weaknesses and my difficulties. And that when I come to him, that if I ask anything in his name, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. See, if we ask anything according to his will and purpose, what's good for us, he will bless us and he will give us what we need. For he says he already in one passage of scripture, and we shall mention this in a video yesterday, he's given us everything we need for life and for godliness. It's all in the power, in the word of God, and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So let's trust in him and put our faith in him today and not turn away and reject the word today. Let's accept it. Let's walk in it. Let's live the word of God. If we ask anything according to his will, he gives us. So let's, we're going to ask later, we're going to pray and we're going to commit some time to the Lord in prayer. So when we ask for anything, he will give it to us. And we know that he hears us. So we have an assurance that he hears everything we ask or think. Even before we say it, before it comes on our lips, when we think it, God hears knows. But he still likes to hear us asking him. And if we know that he hear us, he hear. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that are desired of him. Wonderful word of God. You know, so we have a blessed assurance in Jesus Christ. Next said, and if, if any man see his brother sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death, I do not pray that you should pray for it. I'm not sure about that one, it's something I need to look deeper in and meditate on. So, you know, there is a sin unto death. That eternal death is talking. I think that's complete rejection of Jesus Christ and in denying that he is the Son of God. I think that's what he's saying. I do not pray that you shall, he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. Anything that's the opposite to right standing with God is sin. That's what it means, righteousness. And being unrighteous is the complete opposite. You know, walking away from God, disobeying him. And not doing as he said, all unrighteousness, uh, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. If we endeavour to keep holy and pure before God and walk before him, in all of the ways that we have studied, God's blessing will be upon him, and the wicked one can't touch him. You know, he can try, he can bring us evil thoughts, but he cannot harm us because we have the precious blood of Jesus protecting us. We need to stand in that. We need to put on our armour every day and trust in Jesus Christ. Right, verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. What does that mean? You endeavour to walk in the words of way of God and try not to wander off his path and do the things he's asked you to do. And the wicked one cannot touch you. And we know, see we have a confidence, we can know that we are of God. The whole world lies in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we might know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. 
so we can have assurance, we can know him, we can know the Son, we can know the Father, and we can know the Holy Spirit, and have the him, them one working in us, the three in one working in us, that we might know the truth, that we know the truth, and the truth is that Jesus Christ died upon the cross, he was buried, and he rose again in newness, of, and so that we can experience newness of life in Christ. And we know that this is true because we have a witness with inside of ourselves. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols. That's what we have mentioned a few times in these studies, that we must try not to be spotted by the world and tempted by the things of the world. We need to watch. Be careful what little eyes what you see. Be careful little ears what you hear. There's a saviour up above who is watching over you in love. So we need to stand firm in our salvation. We know not to fill our minds with things that are going to distract us and to turn us away from God. Like the television sometimes, the programmes we watch, the things we, we do and, and listen to. So we need to turn our eyes to Jesus. Now we've got six minutes left, so let us pray. We need to be praying for the things we usually pray for. We pray for each other first. I'll pray. Lord, we thank you that we can come into your presence today. We thank you for your wonderful words of life. Lord, tell it to us again. We need to hear your word over and over daily. Lord, we thank you that you are the way, the truth and the life. No man can come to the Father except it comes through you. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful words of life. Lord, tell us the words of life over and over again. Your word is the truth. Lord, I'm so excited now and filled up, Lord, as I was feeling heavy, Lord, that, Lord, put on our gar my garment of praise, for the spirit of heaviness has gone from me. As another verse from Scripture, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we now come before you. We pray for our NHS. We pray for our doctors, nurses, healthcare assistants, lab technicians, cleaners, cooks, um, radiographers, every department in the hospitals that are working so hard to fight and combat this disease. Lord, we pray for our government. We pray for Boris Johnson, that he would be able to get back to work soon, Lord, that you would give him a complete recovery. But let him, during this time that we ease, ease on isolation, in a sense, that he would turn to you, repent of his sins, and lead us, Lord, into spiritual truth, and lead this country back to Jesus. Lord, we pray for his whole team, that you would be with them today. Lord, we pray for those who work in nursing homes, the nurses, the healthcare assistants, the doctors who visit, the cleaners, the cooks. Lord, that they would have enough PPE equipment on for the health service, that the supplies would come through. Lord, they would be protected. Lord, we pray for those who are having difficulty in being abused at the moment or have been abused by domestic abuse, Lord, physical, emotional abuse, Lord, even sexual abuse, that they would turn to Jesus, they would come to know you as Lord and Saviour, that you would bring them comfort and your peace and your protection and your shalom over them. Lord, we pray for them in the name of Jesus. Now I pray for each one, Lord, who tunes into this broadcast today, that they will feel that anointing, that that blessing, that outpouring of the Holy Spirit that I feel as I do these videos, how I feel encouraged and built up by you. I praise you, Lord. I pray for everyone at Bethel Community Church, those who are feeling heavy and depressed and anxious, that they would turn to you and they would know your presence. Lord, I thank you for your wonderful grace to us today. I pray your anointing now upon each one that hears this today, that, Lord, you will lift up your countenance upon them, that you will give them peace. You will, Lord, take away the spirit of fear, Lord, for you have not given us a spirit of fear. You have given us a spirit of love and power and sound minds. Lord, as we meditate on your word today, that, Lord, you would bring back things we have learned. Lord, help us to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. Lord, let us not be people pleasers today. Let us please God first. Lord, I ask you that you would continue to help us to ask you and to do the things you would want us to do. 
and to put Jesus first in everything, in every decision we make. Help us to concentrate our eyes on you today, Lord, and we will experience the fullness of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, guys, I want to thank you for tuning in today, and I bless you for, you know, listening to these every day. Please, will you subscribe to these videos? Will you uh, share them with your friends? Will you do a like so that the word can be given? That you would walk in a victory and the power of the name of Jesus. That you would know his presence. Lord Jesus, anoint your people today. Lord, I pray against this COVID-19 virus. The Lord, a cure will be found. But Lord, you would stop it. Lord, there is power in the blood. And Lord, as we pray that blood to us when we take communion, the power of Jesus Christ would defeat all attacks of the evil, even the unseen enemy of this virus. Lord, we thank you for your victory. We stand in your victory. We praise you today, for you are great and mighty to be praised. Lord, thank you for the cleansing of your sin, our sins. Lord, thank you, Lord, that we can walk with you. We can talk with you along life's narrow way. Lord, and you are always with us. You never leave us, even unto the end of the age. Lord, we ask you for your fire, your anointing, Lord, as we meet on this way every day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your wonderful grace. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Keep you safe. And I will be doing this again tomorrow, if God allows. Ask God to meet your needs. God says, I will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen, my brothers and sisters. Think about these words, the wonderful words of life. Amen. Praise Jesus. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you never leave us or forsake us. That even when we're feeling down, you come, down, come with your Holy Spirit and lift us up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful grace. As we go into another day, be with us now. In the precious name of Jesus.